Welcome to the Gateway to the West. St. Louis, a jumping off point for hundreds of thousands of people hoping for a better way out west, looking for gold, looking for riches, looking for opportunity. And that's what we have here today with practice and qualifying at Worldwide Technology Raceway in St. Louis. Uh, a reborn multi-purpose facility, drag strip, road course, and a very tricky oval track. Group A of the NASCAR Cup Series heading out onto the track for their practice session, followed by Group B, followed by qualifying. All for you right here this morning on FS1. So good morning from St. Louis. Mike Joy, Clint Boyer, Michael Waltrip with you uh, at a track that, that really great gave us some great racing in our first trip here last year. Man, it's so fun to watch. What I love about this track is the differing ends. You go down to turn one, you're going to shift gears. You're going to see all that. Plus, Clint, it's really hot right now. Already a track temperature over 100 degrees. Mm. But when you get down to three and four, they're slipping and sliding. You're trying to dig on that bottom. This is going to be an entertaining session for me. Group A is out there now. They're going to hit the road. And if your car is like you want it you're going to run it all the way the ma 20 25 laps and learn how to adjust that thing so i want to say to you two thanks for having me up here this well, is i like where your head's at mike but i'm going to dig back into one and two one and two very tight down there in one and two down shifts shifting back up like michael said three and four very wide very sweeping two drastically different ends of this racetrack that plays havoc on these teams and that's what you're going to see them working on today now it's been a short off week with the coca-cola 600 run on Monday and most of the stories and there were a couple of big ones occurred off the track. Let's check with Regan Smith. Well Mike of course one of those big stories Chase Elliott serving a one race suspension following the Coke 600. That presents opportunity for somebody though and that guy is Corey LaJoy. Corey how do you manage hopping in and the pressure of hopping in the nine car versus going out and doing what you know how to do here. And the Lord, time of the whole nine team over Hendrick. It, it's given me more and more confidence that you know, the Lord put me in this position for a reason. Make the most of it. It's awesome. But it's evident why these guys are really good. And they're going to continue to guys. I'm going to the But I'm going to do this nine team and not the Thanks, Gordon. So Chase Elliott suspended for one race for the collision with Denny Hamlin in Monday's Coca-Cola 600. And uh, to review, NASCAR has a lot of data and video, much more than we're able to show you uh, on TV. Uh, they have a camera mounted at the base of the windshield, which looks straight back at the driver. We don't get that on TV. Uh, they have other data available, and they made that decision. It was clear from what we showed you. Uh, the chase coming off the wall after contact from Hamlin turned left. But... We don't know. Did contact from Brad Keselowski send him harder into Hamlin? Was he trying to turn off and away from the wall or trying to turn into Hamlin? Those are things we can't say. Only person who knows that is Chase Elliott. So it's NASCAR that had to make the decision right there uh, as to what happened and why. And there was no points penalty, no dollar penalty, but there was a one race suspension to Chase Elliott, uh, similar to had been done to other drivers in the past. And it was a hard hit for that man. Denny Hamlin's impact yeah. to that outside wall was was really severe. Talked to him the other day, and he said his neck was sore. But other than that, he was ready to go racing here in St. Louis and put all put all that behind him as well. I'll tell you who's ready to go. Joey Logano, man, ran really good here. Obviously, big week uh, last year. Fast again. These Fords, they've been turning a corner, Larry. We've seen some action coming out of them. Charlotte. Obviously, Blaney stepped up and won the Coke 600 last week. They've been pretty quiet this year. Last two races got us talking yeah, about Michael him. McDowell has jumped up there to fourth right now in that 34 car, Clint. Michael, Mike. He, he's been fun to watch this year, isn't he? Uh, Michael yeah. McDowell, a lot of speed as we take a look at Hamlin off turn four. And you know what I love about this track, Clint, is that entry into one. It's just so fun. Really fast, really tight down into there. Hard, challenging, a lot of brakes. You know, you're on the brakes trying to get her woed up, trying to slow down, sliding up the racetrack, diamond in a little bit. You see some guys down on the bottom, a lot of different ways around there. And that's the, the options is what I loved as a race car driver. You can run around the bottom or you can slide up top. Hopping on board here, running down the back straightaway, shifting those gears like we talked about. Now this entrance is real flat, slow. Car wants to get loose underneath of it. Really easy to roll out from underneath of you. If I ever had to say one of that corner reminds me of something, it's like a big Martinsville. 
you get loose in, you kind of lose the nose in the middle, and you can get a snap loose off. Um, but it's, uh, it's obviously just a lot bigger. Very flat corner, challenging. So the Upside app is new to NASCAR, and they're sponsoring the onboard camera for Chase Briscoe uh, this week. Who is the other big story uh, of the week? His car was taken back to the NASCAR R&D Center uh, for a complete disassembly and checkover. And a part was found in the underside of the car, a NACA duct, that was not the approved single source part. It was a copy of that part. Uh, and they raced with that on there, and that is a huge violation. Briscoe was fined 120 points. Crew chief uh, fined $250,000 and suspended for six races. And worst of all, 25 playoff points. So he drops from 17th to 31st in the standings. Now, the only way he's going to get in the playoffs now is to win a race, and the only way he's going to advance is to win in every round. So this is a huge penalty for not using the single source part uh, in that instance. And when these cars go back to the R&D Center, they are torn completely down. Every nut and bolt, every part is examined to make sure uh, that it complies to NASCAR's standards for this Gen 7 car, Larry. Yeah, Mike, one reason that Stuart Haas Racing, in my opinion, elected not to appeal is all of the penalties they received under the L3 category was the smallest, was the, the the smallest amount. They could have been deducted 180 points. They could have been deducted 50 playoff points, and they could have been fined 500,000. But the two biggies that they did not get, which is an option on NASCAR's part, they can actually nullify their postseason eligibility, meaning no matter what, you're not going to be a part of the playoffs. And they actually could have set the 14 team home for one race. So I think that's one reason they elected not to appeal. Thanks, Larry. Stuart Haas said it was a QC problem, that it's something that slipped through their uh, quality control that shouldn't have happened, and uh, that was their defense. But NASCAR said, you know, said you got to abide by the rules, and that was the penalty. Now, two cars failed inspection twice, the two and the six. This look at this. The six of Brad Keselowski, and look at the left rear tire. Whoa. These uh, left rear tires take such an abuse uh, here at this racetrack. The flat, fast corners really wants to eat into that left rear tire. Yeah, but I think it might be an air pressure issue as well, Larry. Yeah, we saw the same thing here a year ago. In fact, Chase Briscoe in that 14 we just spoke about sat on the pole. And before we got to the first caution, he actually had a left rear come apart. Yeah, it, it's a combination of things. Goodyear says do not go below 14 PSI in the left side tires. But if you add in if they're aggressive with toe, if they're aggressive with camber, all the other settings, that just magnifies the loads on that left rear. Well, that tire had seven laps on it. There's a good shot of the left rear as McDowell with a really fast forward down into turn three. Yeah, Michael McDowell up to fourth in group A. A busy day just outside St. Louis. Welcome back to St. Louis. This is Carson Hosevar. Uh, Corey LaJoy driving the nine this week for Hendrick Motorsports opened up a seat for Spire Motorsports in the seven and uh, they tapped Hosovar to fill the seat. This is the team Nigu uh, onboard camera. The never ever give up a charity for children's cancer. There's I'm not sure. I'm not sure if you can point your phone at that uh, QR code on the <laughs> roof, uh, but there's one right neck right on the headrest there. Maybe you can get that one to uh, to make a donation and check out what's going on on this racetrack. We're going from fifth to third leaving turn four here in fourth gear they, i've seen it bounce around clint they're trying some different things they're changing gears to fifth here he'll go all the way to third down into turn one so he can get a big run off the corner and i want to give a shout out to carson he's one of our truck guys man yep. he's starting for tomorrow got his first win at texas this year doing a great job behind the wheel of the truck but he hopped in his car he hasn't been in this race car and making some great lap times. You can see on our pylon, he's just below Bowman. He's 13th in the in the serial, but just doing a nice job. So when you're doing a double downshift like that, is there a danger of over revving that car? Well, Absolutely. 
opportunities there for sure. My thing was is how late he grabbed that downshift. You know, that's the craft in, in which you use a downshift to help slow you down and get your car rotated in the middle of the corner. He downshifted very, very late in three and four. It's just fun to watch everybody have their variations on yep. how to shift gears, whether they go from third to fifth or maybe leave it in fourth down the front straightaway because you don't have as much speed. So uh, I think we're going to see it all over the board. Fifth gear there for Joey. Fast forward again this week. God, what a fun race last year we had here. His and Kyle Busch's battle at the end of this event was amazing. Boy, he is kind of the, the king of brand new racetracks, isn't he? One first at the Coliseum, one first uh, here in St. Louis. Undisputed. Kyle Art. Larson, second on the board, came in for a change, said uh, needed a little more grip uh, entry and center of the corner, but he said he was throwing it in the corner really deep, and maybe that's why he got loose uh, that one time. Larry Mack. Yeah, just an observation. Watching Denny Hamlin, that 11 car, he's been out there since the start of this practice. He's run 23 laps, and we are looking at only a three to four tenth fall off. What that gives these crew chiefs is a much bigger playbook for tomorrow. I actually saw it last year when I went back and watched this race from a year ago. It opened up options of staying out, two tires, fuel only, flipping stages. And even though it's hot and slick, tire fall off just does not seem to be that huge this weekend. And Larry, I love that. Options. You know, that means some guys will get two tires possibly. Some guys will stay out. You're going to see strategy all over the board. The crew chiefs are going to earn their keep this weekend. For me, it's amazing that Goodyear can build a tire that way, right? Uh, hot and slick. We talk about it. You saw that left rear down. That's where air pressure and things like that, they try to get all they can, the grip out of the tire with the air pressure. But mistakes. When I hear Larry starting to talk about that, I immediately think minimizing mistakes. A lot of opportunity here on the table, but if you beat yourself, you're out of the game. See it every week. Go going back to Team Hendrick, three of their four cars are in this A session. The one that is not is the nine. Uh, the Corey LaJoy is driving this weekend, and they had, the ja they had that car jacked up a little while on the left side and were making what looked like some major front end changes, even though they haven't even yet been on the racetrack. Huge opportunity. We see it. We cover that every week. You know, this going out the second uh, in the second group is a huge opportunity, especially if you have teammates like you do at Hendrick Motorsports. They, did, they heard just like we heard Kyle Larson in the five car saying, man, I'm too loose. Kind of, I need a, you know, a better balance, if you will, with my car, better platform. And they all across the board made those changes. That nine car went up right beside it on jack stands, made the same exact change, whatever it was in the left front. Kyle Busch seventh on the board. Um, he's talking about track condition here. out and then give it wheel it'll it'll slide and then exit it wants like on throttle it wants it's easy to just slip the back out you know i don't know if it's right rear or left rear but it's just easy to just lose the rear if i want to just whack the gas and go back to it it'll step out slide out but three and four yeah tied across the middle that's a breakdown right there, isn't it? Well, it's that's also why a challenge, too. Loose in, loose off, tight in the middle. Oh, that's there's a that. tight off and snaps loose that we were talking about. Pretty wild ride off that turn. So uh, Brad Kozlowski has been back out on track, and uh, Goodyear, or NASCAR, has allowed him an additional left rear tire because for that tire to fail within seven laps is likely not an, just an adjustment or air pressure issue. So NASCAR is giving him the benefit of the doubt and saying, okay, that could have been an anomaly, a faulty tire. We're going to allow you an extra one to put on there. Sure looks like air pressure to me. <laughs> me too. <laughs> well, but you never know. That an anomaly, start with A. <laughs> Bubba Wallace, excuse me, Tyler Reddick on the back straightaway. You look at his left side tires. Yeah, that's what I love. You can just see the deflection on those things. And then, you know, what a job Goodyear does, making sure they don't blow out more. more. How many times have I heard Larry Mack say, they're not bad tires, we just do bad things <laughs> to them. Yeah. What about this session? Ticking right down. Talked to Larson this morning. He said, that 20 minutes goes by faster than you can imagine if your car isn't right. And wow. we saw him hitting to work on his car and loose so uh he said we don't have much time to do anything when things aren't right 
flip side of that, like we're talking about with Denny Hamlin, I mean, ran 28 laps, 24 with Tyler Reddick. Those guys are happy with their car. 18 with Logano. 21 with Bowman. That gives those crew chiefs what they need to see. Y'all want to, you know, get your cameras, get a read on the tires, air pressures, things like that. The only way you can do that is one solid run. If it's a little off, stay out there and run. If yeah. it's way off, you got to come in and abort the mission and, and make an adjustment like you saw with Kyle Larson. And on the flip side of that scale, J.J. Yaley, 10 laps, Chris Buescher, 11, Brad Kozlowski, 12, because of having to come in and make adjustments and, uh, and go back out. You got to feel pretty good about things if you're Hamlin, fastest in the 10 lap average, fastest in 15 across the board. So about that graphic scheme, uh, which from a distance looks pretty muddled, when you get up close, those are all snapshots, much like Team Penske did for their 50th anniversary. This celebrates every driver and every car uh, that have contributed to the 100 wins by their sponsor. Scott McLaughlin, 48, most of those in the Australian Touring Car Series. Wow. Joey Logano, 29. Rick Mears, 10, uh, top that list. The first one, the 1984 Indy 500, won in that bright yellow Penske car by Rick Mears. Not a bad partnership over the years. And not a bad weekend for the captain. There's a Roger Penske. I saw Bud Danker, Greg Penske up there on the roof celebrating. And Newgarden goes into the stands to celebrate with the crowd. Same song, second verse. Ryan Blaney drives to victory in the Coca-Cola 600, and he's going up in the crowd for a little <laughs> celebration. How about that? He said it was like being in a mosh pit. I'll bet. I'm sure he's been in one before, so he would know exactly what that feels like. Right. <laughs> All right, Joey Logano with that commemorative wrap on his number 22 Mustang is fastest in Group A practice, 136.8 miles per hour. All right, Group A practice complete. Joey Logano's Ford fastest, Kyle Larson Chevy second, the first Toyota, Tyler Reddick, fifth overall. And Group B begins to roll out on the racetrack. Their 20-minute clock has started. There's the best 10-lap average led by Denny Hamlin and Michael McDowell. Great session for McDowell, just a half a tenth off of Denny. Denny stretched it out all the way to 25 laps, and he was the best in every category. All right, so as Group B rolls out, uh, to, to put a period on the Chase Elliott, Corey LaJoy story, why not Josh Berry? He's the designated substitute driver of for Hendrick Motorsports, signed in the offseason. He subbed for Chase when he had his snowboarding accident. He subbed for Alex Bowman when he had his sprint car uh, accident. Why isn't Josh Berry in the nine? He's in Portland, Oregon. He couldn't well, make it. Long ways from here. <laughs> That's a good reason. Xfinity <laughs> race. He's off doing some uh, road racing. Yep. Long ways away. Then poor truck drivers, unsung heroes of NASCAR. These guys have been all over the place, ladies and gentlemen. Feel bad for those guys. I know they're earning their money. Proud of them. Their efforts are known. Carla Joyce had quite a season, and he now has a haircut. We'll have to update that uh, caricature. 19.1 average finish. There are two precedents. That might change. That yeah. might get better this well, weekend. Well, it could, yeah. Two precedents for this. One. In 1998, his dad, Randy, a two-time Bush Series champion, was Ricky Craven's substitute for Rick Hendrick in the Cup Series. But I think the bigger one uh, was further back when Jimmy Means, uh, a great independent driver who lacked funding, was tapped by Rick Hendrick to drive in the fall 500-mile race at Charlotte because Tim Richmond was ill. Jimmy Means got a shot at the Folgers 45, qualified that car in the top 10, was running up near the front uh, when caught up. he was caught up in a wreck. Something's so, different for yeah. Corey LaJoy. As you can see him coming down the back, uh, that, that thing was wiggling with him. It's just probably a situation where you're trying to understand the steering, the feel of the car. Would you agree, Clint? Yeah. I mean, there's got to be differences, right? I mean, it's completely different all the way. I, I'd say the old hot ride probably feels pretty good to him. <laughs> I would rather it be good in the corners and Wiggly going straight. I can make better time that way. You know, you mentioned <laughs> Josh Berry, Mike. Just think about the opportunity and, and how he took advantage of that opportunity. Talking Josh Berry, knocked it out of the park. Probably going to land him in a big time cup ride because of that. Most likely. 
How good does it feel for this young man showing up at the racetrack, not having to answer that darn question? 59 when, races. When are you going to win? He said that was his favorite thing about the win. He doesn't have to talk about that anymore. And then being able to celebrate with the fans in the stands and winning. He said he grew up watching his dad run the World 600, and he just dreamed of winning that race. Special night. And you watch the difference it makes. Nothing better than a win. Fixes everything, and momentum comes with it. Well, we've had several winless streaks snapped this year. All for the good. Ricky Stenhouse winning at Daytona. Ryan Blaney at Charlotte. Martin Truex had been on a drought winning at Dover and Denny Hamlin. So that leaves this as the longest active winless streak of drivers who have won at least one cup race. I think this one's coming. Excuse me. That Brad Keselowski's which one. I think his win's coming soon. They are knocking on the door very hard. Little racing here in practice. Blaney trying to size up Daniel Suarez. I like this though, Mike. That's exactly what I want to do. That's real life situations. When they get into this race tomorrow, that's the stuff that I need to see. I want to go out and be by myself for a minute, know the balance on my car, know what I have there. As soon as I know I have that dialed in, I'm going to go out there and put it in dirty air and see how I pass these guys. And you saw what Blaney did down there in one and two. He rode up the hill trying to get that diamond effect off the corner and making the run. Which is how you pass them. So this track is fairly flat like Loudoun, New Hampshire, but it's egg shaped like Darlington. Does it drive like either one of those? No, no. Okay. No. It's very a, well, tight good. down there in one and two. Good. And that's that's what I, I said in the opening. That's what I love. You know, you've got to be versatile. You've got to understand how to attack Whoa. both corners differently. Hold on to it. Corey. Yeah, this car is not to Corey's liking. Loose, oh. just like we saw Larson. Looks like he's getting in the corner really deep. And that's what you do when you're, when you're excited about a new ride. You're going to give that thing a whirl. Well, right. that's, that's a tricky thing about turn one. It entices you to do that. I mean, it's so sharp down there. You look, look at it. You go down there, it looks like you're going to hit the wall head on. Larry Mack? Yeah, I'm going to put my Alan Gustafson hat on right now, the crew chief of this nine car. You know, Corey has run seven laps, and Alan is able to look at the same date I am. And Corey is, to Michael's point, overdriving the corner, ton of brake getting in the corner very erratic with the throttle on the exit i know we've got to make the race car as good as possible but let's just settle down let's just settle down and let's let's just run some laps here and let's kind of get get nestled in here because he's he's just overdriving the race car right now and that's not surprising at all i mean he's dreamed of this opportunity and <laughs> he's thought about it all week and uh, just just want to give the car all if all he can Wow, look at that low air pressure on that left side, both front and rear. That's why they fail at times, because yeah. they know their speed. The teams know their speed and that lower pressure, because as they build, then it becomes more grip. But if you start with them up, then you lose that grip as the tire pressure goes up. Corey LaJoy has dreamed of an opportunity like this ever since Jimmy Johnson announced he would retire from full-time cup racing. LaJoy crafted a letter to Rick Hendricks saying, you know, I... I, I think I can do this. I want to do this. Would you give me an opportunity? And it is something that I have harped on my kids over and over again. If you don't ask, the answer is always no. And today, having asked and having kept at it and kept working to prove himself, that door opened for Corey LaJoy this weekend. And, you know, we're sorry Chase Elliott's not here. We hope Corey makes the most of this opportunity. He will. And, and, you know, I'm fine with what he's done. He's really being aggressive, learning the limits of the car. Hasn't put it into the fence or made a, made a huge mistake. He's run 10 laps, and he's only lost a tenth of a second. So that first lap wasn't that good, but he's hanging in there pretty good. So on our pylon, the drivers listed in white are the drivers in Group B. Eric Almirola fastest over Martin Truex and Ross Chastain. Group B practice uh, just about halfway through. There is the fastest car in Group B, Eric Almirola, after 16 laps. 
Uh, let's get out of the pits. Regan. Well, Mike McKeezer, Brad Keselowski, 10th quickest in that first group, but we saw a little bit of drama from your race car with the left rear tire. Any concern about that tire as we lead, lead into tomorrow? Yeah, a lot of concern, Regan. Um, not sure why it blew out. We thought we were really conservative, and uh, we saw a lot of issues there last year, and not sure what's up, so we'll try to digest that once we get through all the practice qualifying stuff. Thanks, Brad. You know, if you're wondering what's going on with these Group B cars, I'm really being the fastest down in ninth. It's just hot, Mike. It's getting hotter, it too. Look at uh, RFK this year. Five top fives versus a goose egg at this point in the season a year ago and twice the laps led. As you said, Clint, it's they keep marching toward the front. It's only a matter of time. It's coming. Yep. Their day is coming. There's been several times already this year. I was like, it's today's the day. Brad will get his arms around this. He's a smart cat. A couple of talented racers there. Works hard. Getting ready for qualifying. And Corey LaJoy's come in, and they've made another change to the left side. Where's Corey? Uh, got a good night in that 3 8 to 5 8 when I want to roll the gas. Got good security into your corner and the finish. Just working up to trusting it. Working up to trusting it. And did you hear how precise he was about the three quarters to five eighths that, you know, that deep part of the corner he's talking about? That's how a crew chief decides what moves to make on the chassis. That's a that's a Jimmy Johnson kind of analysis. He would break down the corner. Oh, some guys would break down the corner in two or three parts. He'd break it down into, into half a dozen. Regan. Mike with the seven car of Corey LaJoy vacated as Corey's in the night car this weekend. That opens up opportunity for Carson Hosebar. Carson, your first laps in a cup car. How's it been so far? Uh, it's uh, pretty surreal. I really wasn't nervous or anything because I still don't, I still didn't believe it's real. Uh, I get to drive this race car. It's almost too big for me to comprehend, but the second I got in that thing, uh, my, everything was flush. They said 30 seconds. I'm like, oh, oh, oh. like I'm going to drive a cup car. Um, so it's pretty crazy. Felt it's just similar to the sim. Ran so many laps, just so much preparation um, before this race that I felt prepared around running laps. And the Inspire Group really gave me all the tools I needed. And uh, got loose one time, probably spooked me a little bit. And I'm like, man, I need to, I need to come in. I don't really need any adjustments. I just need to come in and catch my breath so I can go back out. But um, yeah, they have a lot of faith in me. They, they're really excited and. Um, I just hope to keep this up and keep our speed up and just keep the car clean and uh, that'll be a good day. Busy day for Carson. Also, Mike, he'll be in the truck series race later this afternoon. Don't, don't you just love that, Mike? He's, he's so happy about getting to drive a cup car. And the reason why he's getting to drive a cup car are the results that he's put up in the truck series and in the Xfinity series, two straight races in the top 10 in the Xfinity, starting fourth here today, like I said. And a year ago here, this is where he got hurt, broke his ankle and then went to Sonoma in the truck and sat on the pole. <laughs> that was an, an amazing turn of events. And now a year later, he comes to St. Louis with a ride in a cup car. I think that's a great story, Clint. He is uh, 16th overall in practice, 13th in Group A, and what a great personality. Yeah. Great young man. Yep. We followed his career closely over on the trucks. Ty Gibbs down into turn one. Keep learning. We'll do a hot pit road in when you're all done. Did you hear that? Hot pit road. I think that means he's going to make a run to the end of pit road to understand how much speed he can carry coming into the pits for uh, for tomorrow's race. He is fourth fastest uh, in this session. And here's what I was trying to show earlier is watch the gear shifting uh, that's going on here at different ends of the racetrack, different gears in the middle of the corner. And you're also going to see different drivers changing those gears differently because it's just all a feel, a preference for what you're feeling behind the wheel. There's that double down shift. I love that solid run up off the corner. No tire spin. Heard him say 76. That's 33.76 on that lap time. And let's not forget, this is another new track for Ty Gibbs in a cup car. Never never been here, uh, or Sonoma, or Chicago. The next next few races coming up on the schedule. 
So a lot to process for the rookie. Martin Truex, second in this B group. 33-16 to Almirola's 33-11. But if you look out at that 15th lap, 33-5-1, that's a really good lap time for long for the long run. Suarez got that big win a year ago going to Sonoma. It's got to feel good to know he's heading back there. 24th overall and uh, I believe 10th in the B group right now. More rubber on the track for Group B, but also it's a much hotter day than it was when we opened up practice at 9 a.m. It's a scorcher out here this weekend, and I think that's the biggest part of it, Mike. Yes, it's more rubber on the racetrack, but it's getting slicker by the minute. That's why you, these teams just study that long run. You know you, you know you didn't have the opportunity to put down that blazing fast lap when the session started, so they're really focused on what they're doing now. There's the temperature, but man, that track temperature is zooming up. That's the one to watch, 100 degrees. Kevin Harvick, 13th in Group B. 33-41, that's about three-tenths off what his teammate Al Marola ran as a fastest lap to lead this session. Nice exit there right on the paint as he comes off the corner. I love driving this track. It's so fun. Well, first time around here for Ty Gibbs, last time around here for Kevin Harvick, who will call it a career in November and transition over to the broadcast booth. They already graduated him from the drivers only uh, <laughs> Xfinity Series telecast. He got a diploma and the other announcers toilet papered his bus <laughs> there at uh, Charlotte. As they should have. Well, yeah. What a career it's been for Kevin Harvick. As you see, the nine cars back out there, Corey LaJoy made some adjustments. So he's continuing his learning, getting a feel for this car, understanding how it differs from what he's been used to. Yeah, LaJoy's 3390s right now are within a couple of tenths of the fastest cars. There's the moose. He was part of the fun a year ago, wasn't he? The moose is loose. Yep. He and Denny had a few uh, run-ins during the course of the event. We had a driver in Connecticut, the Modifieds, George Moose Hewitt, and it was always the moose is loose. And he won his share of races, did well. Uh, Chastain, top of the points, 15th overall, third in this B group. But let's go back a year. Here right, St. Louis. Right there started it and ended Denny's day, and Denny made the rest of Ross's day a challenge, I would say. That's putting it mildly. <laughs> <laughs> Waited around for him and slowed him up. Didn't take it out on the race car, though. That's right. People trying to compare what Denny did to what Chase did last week at Charlotte, and there just isn't any comparison there. there. He just uh, was saying, I'm going to make your day difficult. I'm not going to end it. Made a statement. Yep. Hamlin was sixth at that time. This will be Christopher Bell, 23rd overall. That was looked like a bit of a slip. Did he mean to go up that high and dime in the corner? Uh, caution. Time is up. And you can finish your last. Bell is ninth on the speed chart for Group B. We will take a break as the teams transition to qualifying here in St. Louis. Tonight, Baseball Night in America, and it gets no bigger than this. Aaron Judge and the Yankees against Mookie Betts and the Dodgers. And some of you will see the Guardians versus the Twins. Catch the action at 7 Eastern on Fox. Check local listings for the game in your area. So here are the fastest from each group. A pair of Fords, Logano in Group A, Almirola in Group B. Regan. 
Well, Mike, third overall in practice sessions was William Byron, ran 22 laps. So did you learn what you need to about your race car for tomorrow afternoon? I think so. I think we uh, we learned um, a little bit of what not to do. And I think, uh, you know, I was running a little bit of the wrong line. Uh, so I just need to refine that uh, some. But, um, yeah, I got to run in the right line towards the end of the practice and, and felt like I picked up some pace and feel like our, our pace is, is pretty good. So uh, Exalta Chevrolet looks good and good to have Exalta back on the car and uh, just excited for this qualifying session. This was this racetrack was our toughest last year. So trying to overcome all that uh, bad mojo that we had here last year and hopefully uh, improve this year. So, so far, so good. We put a lot of work into it. As you get ready for this qualifying session, a lot of uh, you basically have to drive it way off into turn one, downshift and everything like that. How do you equate what you did in race trim to what you're about to do now in qualifying trim? Yeah, I mean, I hope to not have too much of a memory because I feel like the, the lift points and stuff will probably be different. So just got to adapt and see see what it's like going into turn three. For me, honestly, that's how I gauge my qualifying laps is getting up to speed, what that grip level feels like, and then you just have to have some trust when you go down into into one that you're going to you know, pick the right spot uh, and feel it, you know, through the f through the seat. So uh, hopefully we do that. And uh, yeah, one and two, I think, should be where the, the time's made. Three and four is a lot easier corner. Um, I say that it might not be that way, but it usually is easier to get around there. One and two is really, really important to kind of land right and with the right speed. Well, good luck. Well, good luck landing right and getting it all right here in a minute. Thanks, William. Uh, Beard's taken a while to come in, but everything else this year has gone great for William Byron. He's won the most races, led the most laps. He has five straight top tens. Is he the championship favorite right now? He's on my short list, Clint. Anytime anyone Absolutely. asks me about who championship favorites are, my first answer is Kyle Larson, always, <laughs> as he walks down pit road. And second, you know, William Byron's on that list. But man, with the speed the 12 and the 22 have shown I mean you got to put them on the list it's such a great time to be a NASCAR fan racing through the summer trying to figure out when we get to the playoffs who is the favorite and I don't think it's clear cut right now well you said the 12 uh, looking at Logano there but his teammate Blaney that won that race at, at 600 last weekend that car is extremely fast on a long run that's what you're going to have to have tomorrow the other one the 11 Denny Hamlin really really sporty And qualifying begins. J.J. Yaley will be the first car on track. Now remember, these are the Group A cars competing just against the other Group A cars to be one of the fast five and advance to the final round. Yaley has two top tens in four Xfinity Series starts here. This is his first cup start at Gateway in the 51 for Rick Ware Racing. Didn't have a lot of laps in practice, I think 10. I thought William Byron summed it up pretty good, the challenges of going to qualify here with your lift points. You know, they just they just went on a long run, so obviously they were lifting a little bit earlier. Now you gotta adapt, as Willie said, and make sure you get in the corner deep enough to get a fast lap. I loved a lot of things about his interview. I liked that he was, uh, you know, put it on himself I was running the wrong line went back and looked at SMT made that adjustment found the speed that's why he's one of the favorites for a championship an open approach <laughs> I'll tell you this as an old racer Mike SMT is a game changer for a these, lot of reasons these yep. <laughs> these drivers can look and see what the guy's doing that's beating them I mean uh, and you can watch his throttle his steering you can see all that stuff and it's a great way to educate yourself as to what to do to be faster Gotta be a little humbling too. At times, for sure. Yeah, BJ it can also tell on you. Yeah, yeah. BJ but McLeod finished 30th here last year. Back in the day, you would say that your crew chiefs would say, did you run wide open through one and two at Charlotte? Yeah, yep, sure did. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Always do, Chief. <laughs> that's right. Well, that's not exactly true. <laughs> the data shows differently. You might have thought you did, but you did it. So there was a test, and I forget what track, but Joe Rutman was the driver, and they had the car all instrumented up. This is way before SMT data. And they said, Joe, I think it was Talladega. They said, Joe, you're not holding it all the way down to the floor in three and four. He says, yes, I am. He says, I got my left foot over on my right foot on the gas pedal all the way to the floor. And the fellow who told him that was Larry Mack. Larry, you finished the story. Well, yeah, we were at Daytona actually testing with a 26 Quaker State car, and the data showed that he was lifting in the corners and, and and joe actually got upset at me about it 
And what we figured out, the firewall was flexing. He truly was holding the throttle wide open, but in the corner when the car was loaded, the firewall was flexing and letting the throttle come back just a little bit. We fixed that and all was good. All right. So it was your fault. Absolutely. Always the crew chief's <laughs> fault. <laughs> that was spoken like a true driver, wasn't it? Ty Dillon finished 27th here last year. He goes to the top of the board with a 33.77. Regan? Well, oh, Mike, last week's Coca-Cola 600 winner, Ryan Blaney, I got to find out, are you still on cloud nine? What a special win that was. Yeah, it's, it's definitely been a fun week, you know, and it's like a balancing act of enjoying what you guys, what we did as a team, but at the same time getting ready for this weekend, you know, so, uh, but it was, it was just fun to, to, you know, kind of relive it with everybody and go to the Penske shop on Tuesday and see the IndyCar folks and the NASCAR folks kind of celebrate together. That was, that was really fun, but uh, new week and uh, we'll try to get it done again this weekend. All right, good luck. Thanks, Ryan. Wow. What a downer. <laughs> Seriously. It was one of Roger Penske's drivers, Mark Donahue, who said Sunday night at midnight, the clock turns back to zero. You get ready for the next race. But I think everybody in the garage, everybody in the sport, happy for this young man to uh, finally break that streak and get that win. Very popular, popular win. win. Yep. And he was emotional after that race. It got to him a bit. Very. Uh, Eric Jones in the 43 new sponsor this week finished inside the top 10 last summer here and he's now at the top of the chart 33 34 here is Carson Hosevar in the number seven for Spire Motorsports. We've talked about the temperature going up and the rubber going down on the road. No one's been able to run in the four cars that have gone as fast as they did in that practice session as soon as they threw the green flag this morning. So that's why you didn't see any of the group. B cars up toward the front of the running order after practice was over. The track was just way faster when we started this morning. Top of the chart, 33-27. All right, go ahead and get your blue switch back up. 33-27, nice job. P1 currently out of five. You know, banged a the gear there. Yeah, it sounded like he was trying to get it in a neutral and may have, that spun that motor pretty hard. Michael McDowell was quick in practice. He led 34 laps here last year before finishing 18th. I think you're going to see how good of a lap that was by Carson here because of we talked about the speed of McDowell, top five in that Group A run. You know, if you squint, that looks like the old Kenny Wallace Red Bull car. Kenny's <laughs> going to join us here for a part of the race tomorrow. Red Same dog. color scheme. Red, Red dog. dog. Yeah. Not Red Bull. Red Dog. Yep. Kenny has a souvenir trailer here. He's not even racing here, but he has a lot of fans here. I think I saw on the intranet where he finished second last night in Granite City, City Illinois. Does that sound All right? right? It's home, baby. Always run better home. <laughs> Michael McDowell fastest. Here's Chase Briscoe. Last year's pole sitter here, uh, but finished 24th. Ooh, big slide way up the hill. Big slide. It's going to hurt him. Still in the green, though. Coming yeah, back okay, huh? One. Pretty good rebound. That was the spotter telling the team what happened, got loose, or it was Chase, but he did get loose in one. We know that. <laughs> Must have carried a ton of speed into that corner. Look at this lap time. Compared to the bubble. Second fastest for Briscoe, 33 27. Yeah, that knocks BJ McLeod out of the fast five. He's not going to be very happy with that. No. So Ty Dillon on the bubble. Here's Denny Hamlin, who started sixth here last year and was running sixth when he and Ross Chastain got together, leaving Hamlin with a 34th place finish. Denny's got a really good long run car. This car's going to race well. Need to start up front. A lot of green right here. Three teams to the good, Mike. Half Excuse me, that's in the bubble at fifth. Yeah, half a second to good to the bubble. It's good to be on the right side of the bubble. That'll put him up to the top of the board. Yes, sir. Thirty-two eighty-seven. Wow, business has picked up. Eric Jones goes to the bubble. That's the fastest lap we've seen today, Mike. Yes. Kyle Larson finished 12th here last year. He has two wins in the bank this season. 
a real up and down season for Larson. Uh, checkers or wreckers <laughs> term <say>. might apply. <laughs> That's just the way he is, though. I mean, you put him in a late model, same way. <laughs> you, I mean, a sprint car, he's going to be up front. He's going to be there when the pay window's open, or he's going to be already on the truck. Well, I like it. Case in point this week, he yeah. won a big sprint car race, and then he wrecked his late model last <laughs> night. <laughs> well, as a lot of drivers say, if you win enough races, the points will take care of themselves. Larson is third, 33-20. Here's a look at his season in review. <laughs> uh -oh. oh, it gets better. Fixed it. Yep. Way, be way better. Uh -oh. oh, no. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh no. no. <laughs> oh, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Yep. That's yep. A good Very one. good. Yeah. All star. And then. Unbelievable. Uh, look at that graph. <laughs> Looks like my. That is checkers or records. <laughs> We move to the second half of Group A. Denny Hamlin is fastest, 32.87. Three tenths up on Michael McDowell. Carson Hosevar is on the bubble. And here is Ryan Priest making his first start at Gateway. And uh, he's finished top 15 his last two races. Darlington and Charlotte for Stuart Haas. <laughs> Man, that thing sounds like it's digging up, up off that turn, doesn't it? Sure does. Hear those downshifts? Yeah, one downshift is something, right? Shifting <laughs> twice, that's a lot of work going on in a short amount of time. You see Priest up against Carson Hosevar, who's currently on the bubble. Oh, Carson did a nice job again. See if Ryan can rally here off turn four. Lost a lot of time right there. Looked like a front end took off on him. It was slow to rotate. Making up a little back on exit, but Priest is sixth right now, 33-43. So Hosevar holds on to the bubble, and you see the track temp has picked up about seven degrees since we started. Justin Haley started 28th, finished 14th here last year. Has three truck series starts here with a win in 2018. Hosevar was a little bit slower than Priest and, or excuse me, Haley is a little bit slower than Hosevar and Priest in practice, so he'll have to pick up to get that spot. Looked like he did a nice job in three and four. He did, fourth at the line. That will bump Hosevar out of the fast five. And here is last year's winner at Gateway, Joey Logano. Started seventh, led 22 laps on the way to victory. And what a battle it was. He and Kyle Busch crossing each other over. Slide jobs that had it all. Great race. Single down shift into one and two. I think this is one that this group, Joey Logano, and where I'm going with this is being in that first group. There's been a lot of time in between the time, the last time he was on this racetrack, it's a lot hotter, a lot slicker out here. That's a challenge for these guys. He's going to bump in. Got to feel your way through that, Mike, pretty, you know, quick. Makes Second. the adjustment. Second for Logano. That uh, knocks out Chase Briscoe and moves Haley onto the bubble. That 32.87 Hamlin put oh. up, that's, that's a whale of a lap. Well, Logano ran a 32.88 in practice. If that tells you how much this track has changed, he was two tenths off of that time. And Denny was able to run the fastest lap of all, all day long. No one was faster in practice Didn't this either. this car just make you want a King's Hawaiian roll? <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what that doesn't happen to me often, but listen to these guys shifting gears and running this track, it makes me want to be a race car driver again. Oh. This is, looks fun. That never gets out of your system. Brad Keselowski, 20th here last summer. Xfinity Series winner in 2010. <laughs> Going to be close here. But he's in third, 33-15, knocks out. Good lap. Good lap. Puts Larson on the bubble. 
All right, with five to go. Alex Bowman, 13th at Gateway last year, 12th last week in his uh, return to cup racing after suffering a broken vertebrae in an open wheel car. Well, if he's able to, we'll have to run what he ran in practice, Mike, in this session right now to be able to bump in. Very few people have been able to do that. He's going to do it. Looks like he will. So this will lock Denny Hamlin into the fast five. Bowman is third. Knocks out Kyle Larson, moves McDowell to the bubble. So Hamlin's in the final round. Larson is out. Chris Busher missed uh, last season's race here at Gateway due to COVID. So this will be his uh, first cup race here. Way up the hill there in one and two. That's yeah, funny, too, because I was just fixing to say, giving praise for, you know, disciplining himself, back that corner up, then the car still rolled up. He needs to find two tenths here. I don't think you make that up. You know, you give up two tenths on one end, you just, you can't make that up on the other. So McDowell holds on for now. Busher is tenth. And that will lock Joey Logano into the final round. Kyle Busch, runner up here after that great battle with Logano. He led 66 laps here last year and has an Xfinity win here. He and his son Brexton won last night at Doe Run Raceway, about 80 <laughs> miles south of here. And they'll be racing again tonight in the area. At least Brexton will be. Larson said his son this Owen was so going to go running. Close. And it fell off at the entry to turn three. Look at this. Found Coming it. back. Got to that throttle early, picked it up. If he can stay with it off the floor, he'll have it. There it is. Second for Bush. He locks himself into the final round, and that bounces McDowell out of the fast five. So Hamlin, Bush, Logano are locked in. We're down to the last two in Group A. Tyler Reddick finished 16th here last year. I love that. That was a classic example of easy and hard off. Yep. What a thrill show he was last Monday. Oh, yes. <laughs> you see that yeah. save off turn four? Into the wall, into the infield, never lost a spot. Pretty amazing. Well, he rifled that baby off into turn one. Got it rotated right down on the bottom. A little bit different line than we've seen. Making it work. He's going to lock himself in. Still one corner to go here. Look Man, at that. that car really rolls down into the bottom of the racetrack, rotates good for him. Good lap. Second for Reddick, and that knocks Kozlowski out of the top five. Reddick is in to the final round. One spot remains from Group A, and it'll be one of the Hendrick Chevys, either Alex Bowman with 33-14 or William Byron, who finished 19th here last year. Said there was a lot to forget about last year, <laughs> and he had to regroup and figure it out. Well, he's finished top four in his last four cup races this year and leads the league in wins. But now, will he make the final round? See him diamond up in the middle of the corner. Oh, a little wide there. Not car bad, looks, though. Car looks tight. Big arc into the corner, three, right down to the bottom. And if you are tight, you would do what he did, put it down on that paint, and it worked. Byron is third, bounces his teammate Alex Bowman out of the fast five. So from group A, two Toyotas, two Chevys, and one Ford, with Denny Hamlin fastest out of group A, 32-87 is the fastest lap turned in qualifying so far.
Welcome back to St. Louis, where Group A has sent five drivers into the final round for the Bush Light Pole for tomorrow's race here, led by Denny Hamlin and capped by defending race winner Joey Logano. So now the 18 drivers of Group B will have their turn at the track. Again, competing only against the other drivers in Group B. Fastest five of these move on to the final round, beginning with Noah Gregson in his first cup start at Gateway, or excuse me, Worldwide Technology Raceway. The uh, rookie in the 42 had a top 10 in both of his truck series starts. Downshifted a little bit later in the corner than we've heard some of the others. Thirty three sixty three for Gregson. We saw times down in the thirty twos, Mike, in that first group. So here's Greg Galding out of Virginia making his first Cup Series start of twenty twenty three. And this is his first start in the uh, Gen seven Cup car. He does have one truck race here, Regan. Like Joey Logano was fifth, fifth quick in Group A that just finished up a moment ago. You're fastest in the first practice session, though. What do you need your car to do different when we go back out in a few minutes? I always got to adjust our, our balance a little bit. As, uh, <laughs> as messed up as a lap as I had to still be fifth shows a lot of potential in the Shell Penzo Mustang. So I feel great about that. And um, if we make the right adjustments, we'll be ready in the hunt here. So hopefully we do the right things. Good luck, Joey. Thanks. Great golfing a little bit off of the pace of Noah Gregson 3386 got a colorful ride doesn't he Mike very a lot going on there panini that's uh, collector cards and things like that yep. yeah it's also a sandwich kind of thing yes it I, is yeah. I like a good panini with some turkey there you go I like the cards Corey LaJoy uh, driving in place of Chase Elliott, who is serving a one race suspension from actions in the Coca Cola 600. Spire Motorsports Ooh, released uh, LaJoy to drive for Hendrick and filled that seat with Carson Hosevar. Car was loose off the corner, chased it up the racetrack, touched the wall a little bit on the exit of two. Wiggling a little bit off of four as well. Did a nice job. Whoa, oh, into the, the wall. wall. Both ends. 3344. I don't know. I, I mean, obviously got into it. How hard is it? I don't know. The question is, did it bend the toe link on the right rear? We see that all the time. It's time will tell there. They'll have to take a look at it. Austin Sendrick finished 11th here last summer. He was the stage one winner, led 26 laps for Must Team like, Penske. Likes this place. Look at this time he's putting up, Mike. I feel comfortable if we can get down into those 32s about, about moving on. This is a hot one. Sendrick easily top of the chart, 32.91. There's the damage to LaJoy's car. Yeah, these cars are extremely tough. I mean, no harm, no foul there, really. But if it does bend that toe link, that's something that they'll have to uh, to get fixed up for him. And you could really see that wall give, too. You know, the car's tough, like you said, but the safer barrier gave him some extra space there. Todd Gilliland for Front Row Motorsports started and finished 12th, or excuse me, 22nd here last year. He's been second twice in five truck series starts at this track. It's going to be a good lap, decent lap. Really close. All of them get really close to that wall. He, he lifted. He had to lift. Gave up a lot of time. Second, 33-32. Run out of real estate. And now bumping will begin for Group B.
Eric Almirola for Stuart Haas fastest in practice in this group finished top five here last year his most recent top five Cup Series finish. Wow. Bit of a drought. Cars on easy too. We've seen a lot of dancing around in this session. Well, I think this is a product of these guys that, you know, we talked about it going out that first uh, round of practice. It's been a long time. This track has changed a lot since he's last on the race. Um, All right. He is second fastest. Harrison Burton will be next. Regan. Mike Mar Martin Truex Jr., one of the last drivers to go in this Group B qualifying session. The sun's up. It keeps getting hotter out here. How do you adjust as a driver to that? Yeah, I mean, it's it's hot. It's just um, a matter of how much grip does the track have. It looks like uh, it, everybody's picked up from practice pretty much, and it looks like this session's getting quicker and quicker, so we'll just see. But, uh, yeah, hopefully you just really hope your balance is close. Uh, our auto owner's Camry was really close in practice, so hopefully uh, it'll be close here. We go put a lap down. Good luck, Martin. Thanks. Thanks, Regan. Harrison Burton for the Wood Brothers started ninth here last year, made up five positions on a pit stop with two laps to go. Salvaged a 25th place finish on the day. Got to beat Noah Gregson's 33-63. And he does. He is second with a 33-10 to bump into the fast five. Talked to Harrison yesterday, and like Clinton, I was saying, he says this is one of the more challenging tracks we'll go to. Enjoys the challenge, though. Right. I don't know. That 10 is going to be interesting. It's getting hotter. It's getting slicker. It's going to be... I think... That might just do it, do you think? It's going to be close. Daniel Suarez finished uh, 23rd here last year. Our team track house. Such a fun guy. Yeah. Love hanging out with Daniel. A lot of energy. Yeah, he just really is thankful that he gets to do this NASCAR thing. You know, all of these drivers are living the dream, but this is this is one guy who shows it most all the time. <laughs> Hey, he just shows his passion too. You know, I mean, he is a he grinds these races out, doesn't take any any bull off of anybody, and well, takes care of business. Second for Suarez, and uh, that will bump Corey LaJoy from the fast five. Rookie Ty Gibbs making his first career start here. Look at that. Monday, turn. Monday at Charlotte, he completed 897 miles of racing in one day you hear how extreme you know those downshifts were i think that may have touched the red one or just a pinch right there that's okay. a fifth to fourth the third and rip rep back up through the gearbox bringing it home and he will bump in fourth Takes Todd Gilliland out of the Fast Five. So we are halfway through Group B. Ford, Chevy, Ford at the top of the board. All right. Five drivers to transfer to the final round from Group B. Eric Almirola on the bubble, 33-22. Here is uh, A.J. Allmendinger for Colleg Racing. He started 35th here last year with a pre-race penalty, but finished in the top 10. Talking about passion and spirit, that would describe A.J. Allmendinger, wouldn't it? Just a very intense guy. Pretty darn talented behind the wheel, too. And we're going to his home track next week. He will be a factor. <laughs> yep, at Sonoma. A lot of... Larry, that's funny. Tell everybody. Yeah, the boys in Portland, they're glad AJ's in St. Louis. <laughs> yes. He's the man in the Xfinity Series when it comes to road course racing. Absolutely. He won that race the last year, and I think he's won like five of the last seven. Ain't in the no Xfinity doubt about series. it. <laughs> and don't you think his road racing skills helps him at this racetrack? He's very comfortable with shifting gears and having differing ends. I thought, I almost said it with Austin Sendrick. You know, yep. I was listening to Mike say how good he runs here, and it plays, I think, definitely, that, that plays a role in it. Downshifts, you know, 
That's all right. those things, both ends of this track being drastically different. Yes, absolutely. So Eric Almirola out of the fast five. And you're right, if you look at it that way, this is a road course. It just happens with shifting and all, just happens to have all left turns. We also said it with Burton in that 10. I don't think that gets the job done. I'm, we saw those 80s, first and second in the first group, already 90s and flats. How about that? What a cute baby. Congratulations to Austin and Whitney. Your daughter joins their son Ace in that growing family. <laughs> Austin said, I'm now part of the girl dad club, and I oh, couldn't yeah. be happier. <laughs> As we all know. Talk to him and show That's pretty special. He was pumped. Couldn't wait. That's one lap that the 10 of the time of a 3310 bested. Well, he misses it by nine one thousandths. You know, the last three weeks now, he has missed the final round by thousandths of a second. Austin Dillon has. Uh, Christopher Bell finished ninth here last year. He has a truck series win here in 2016. Wasn't that quick in practice. I think he was ninth in uh, in group B. See if they found some speed setting this up for qualifying. These Gibbs cars have really found the speed and their cars come on strong here in the last month. This All boy the sends it into three. Matter. Yeah, he did. Will he give up on exit? I was going to say, so I, yep, there he's paying the price. Yeah. No, Ty Gibbs holds him off. 33-14. Misses it by three one hundredths, and Gibbs stays on the bubble. Ross Chastain. Who finished eighth here last year? He has a truck series win here in 2019. It's really educational for me to see if you can get in deep enough and not lose it on the exit to see how these different drivers attack these corners. Great lap here so far for Ross. For me, it's all, all about the point. You can see when those cars point left in the middle of the corner, they put the hammer down, drive off under the sunset. And he is fast as 32.84. That knocks Ty Gibbs out of the fast five. That's the fastest lap of the day here right in the center of the getting on with it heat. And now we'll begin to lock people in from Group B. Ricky Stenhouse, 32nd here last year. He's coming off his fifth top 10 finish of the year last week. It's good to see him get that consistency. Really kicked off the season, obviously, winning our biggest race. But now it's just week in and week out. He's right there contending. Coast Car shows him against uh, Harrison Burton, who is on the bubble. Larry, what was spectacular about Chastain's lap to you? He picked the throttle up early. On the exit of turn two, he did not have to play with the throttle whatsoever. When he picked it up, he was able to stay in it. That was a huge difference maker right there for Ross. Great. Stenhouse is in. He is fourth. Harrison Burton knocked out. Suarez moves to the bubble. That will lock Chastain into the final round. Next up is Bubba Wallace, who finished uh, 26th here last year. He has a truck series win and a three race top five streak going. No bub has been on fire. Yes. Make that and four, four races. That, if the all star race. <laughs> yes, Michael. Yeah. Which I think was one of the best races he's ever driven. Right. He yep. just he gets. I mean, he's a great race car driver. He's going to win races. Oh, he's not going to qualify in the top five, though. <laughs> <laughs> well, look at that. With, despite up. the big slip, he's still contending. He has a solid three and four. I might be wrong. Gaining on it. See that Oop. point? That's what I talked yeah. about. When and there's that point. And watch, he almost, almost gained on it, but didn't quite work out. All right, Wallace tenth. Suarez hangs on to the bubble, and Austin Sendrick is locked into the fast five now. Kevin Harvick. DNF here last year, but he has two Xfinity series and one truck series win here in St. Louis. Home to his sponsor. 
Next a little higher, but made it work, huh, Clint? Yeah, he dimed in the corner, got that run up off, got the car rotated and drove it back down the hill, and that's made that straightaway longer. Still just doesn't have that point that I like. But man, he got to the gas there. Boy, that car launches off the corner, doesn't it? Got it figured out, didn't he? Second for Harvick, he locks himself into the final round, and that yes, bounces sir. Daniel Suarez. Great lap. He'll be pumped about that. He needs some breath of fresh air. Been beat up a little bit here lately. Two to go. Martin Truex, who finished sixth here last year, leading 42 laps. He ran two Xfinity Series races here, won the pole for both, and scored a win in 2004. 2004. Mm -hmm. Great exit there off turn two. Plenty of steam under the hood, too. Got down that back straightaway well. Look at Ricky Those through straightaway this. handling showed up. <laughs> That's where I like to handle the best. <laughs> down the straightaway? He does it. All right, fourth for Truex, and he will lock in with that fourth place run. So now it is A.J. Allmendinger versus Ryan Blaney for the final spot in the Fast Five in Group B. Blaney finished fourth here last year, led 12 laps. Blaney's got a lot of speed in his car. Momentum's worth something. It is every single time coming off that big win, Coke 600. You watch. I think uh, we can hear our old boy Clint here making Ryan Blaney his favorite for tomorrow, sounding like. Look at this. Car rotates well for him back to the gas. This car was really fast on a long run. Needs to get up front, start up front, be beneficial for that clean air. If he does that, this boy's going to be hard to handle again this week. Oh, look at him pulling away. Right there. I love when you get to say this. I told you. <laughs> <laughs> Top of the board for Ryan Blaney, 32-79. How about that? That will bounce A.J. Allmendinger. So the last to go shall be first. Ryan Blaney, the fastest in Group B. Now 10 drivers will square off next and run for the pole. 10 drivers will run for the push light pole, and here they are. Five each from Group A and Group B. Fastest overall lap, Ryan Blaney, 32.79. Took 33.07 to make the Fast Five in Group A and a tenth less than that to make the Fast Five in Group B. Regan? Mike Tyler Reddick needs a tenth to be the fastest car here, so what do you do to find that tenth in this next round? Well, you know, I think, uh, you know, we just, we looked at our balance on our uh, McDonald's Toyota Camry TRD, just a little bit loose, so, um, you know, hopefully uh, we make the right adjustments on it, go a little bit deeper in both corners, and see if it sticks. Good luck finding <laughs> that speed. Yeah. Thanks. That sounds like Tyler Reddick, doesn't it? <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> just drive her on down in there, see what happens. Love it. Three Toyotas, three Chevrolets, and four Fords are about to battle for the pole in St. Louis. Brian Blaney studying the data as the most precious commodity here in St. Louis right now is shade. Regan, I hope you found some. Mike, I can assure you there's no shade to be found down here right now. We're standing out in the sun. Because of that sun, Ross, this racetrack keeps getting hotter and slicker. You were second group quickest in Group B. How do we pick up a little bit more speed? Well, I was getting some speed seekers from from Mama there. He was the only shade on us two was him throwing it on us. So, uh, yeah, for our moves fraternity Chevy, Regan, it's uh, it's good. Um, it, I didn't ask for anything in practice. Uh, we made one adjustment that the guys wanted to try, and I was like, just please leave it alone. Let me let, let's let's go race. And uh, same thing in qualifying. I don't I don't want anything different. Um, it's really really good, and uh, that's what we're we're trying to do is repeat. Uh, the balance that we had week to week and we're getting closer on it good problem when you're not making adjustments to a race car All right Ross uh, trying for his first Cup Series pole the temperature of the asphalt here is up 15 degrees since the start of practice an hour and a half ago bring your own shade how about that here's the order in which the five fastest from group A and the five fastest from group B 
will qualify. What's at stake here is not just bragging rights on a spot on the front row. This is the narrowest pit road in the NASCAR Cup Series. Look at Charlotte, 38 feet wide for those two lanes, and they were four wide at times. This one, 22 feet wide and a wall to the right. It's not the, easy. You know, that, that's from the outside of the pit box to the wall, from the yellow line across there. And I'm telling you, it's a tight pit road. And Clint, you're going to be three wide. They're going to try to squeeze in there. And we've seen contact on pit road before. Oh, it will happen. Happened last year. Now, there is one outlier to this, and that is Ryan Blaney. Because his car failed inspection twice yesterday and his car chief was ejected, uh, he can qualify and win the pole, but he has lost pit selection uh, because of that double inspection failure, same as uh, Brad Kozlowski. Ooh. So that's Blaney a, qualifying that might, might, for yeah. starting spot only here. That's a big deal here. You can read the graphic, but it's hot. <laughs> yeah, what's crazy is, you know, 89 doesn't seem hot, but boy, it's a hot 89, Michael. <laughs> a lot of asphalt down there, not a lot of shade, as we heard our man Regan Smith say. Humid, too. Hot and humid. It'd be interesting if these cars fall off a little bit. I would think a cycle on the tires would do that a little bit. If you can back up your lap, especially at Blaney, I think you could possibly do that one more time and dip into those 70s. Look at there, Logano was able just to pin that throttle coming to the green. Coming to the green is an important corner. You've got to have all that momentum. He laid the gas down and kept it there. Oh, big time wiggle. Car come out from underneath of him. Double downshift bit him there. Logano trying to back up a 33.07 in round one. I love the way he can mat that thing. It's a flat corner just to throw all that power to it. Well, he went to third gear at both ends of the racetrack. And he does it 33 flat. Very late downshift, Larry says. There's that little slip. I think we I think we run faster in this session, considering that lap with that big bobble. Thinking three and four, he waited to downshift until he was right ready to get back to the gas. And then he held it down. That's important. See That's if a good point, Michael. I mean, he ran an 07 the last time out and had a big wiggle and still ran a little bit faster. Kyle Busch trying to better a 33.02 from round one. Well, it looks Word like he's going to be Hexy. all over that. Where heck's he? Where, how's he out there that far? I guess that's that big bobble we talked about. That tells you how much it hurt Logano's lap. Absolutely. Look at this. This could be the fastest of the day. Two and a half tenths it's showing. Wow. 32.80. That is two tenths faster than Kyle ran in round one. All right. Got us a challenger now. William Byron bet next up, trying to better a 32.99 in his Hendrick Camaro. What a great first half of the season he's had, of the regular season, that is. Leads about every statistical category, doesn't he, Mike? Yep. Just didn't get through one and two. Didn't get off of two near as good as Kyle Busch. That was an awesome lap, Kyle Busch. That, that's going to be close. He nearly had this thing one a year ago, did Kyle Busch. So, loves this place. 33.03 for Byron comes within uh, four one hundredths of his first round time. Yeah, he was all over that, running 99. That first lap in the first round. Now, if, if Tyler Reddick can back up his first round time, he'll be second fastest. He had a 32.88. Well, he told Regan he's going to go in a little deeper and see if it sticks. So he should go faster if it does. Pretty aggressive <laughs> coming to the green off of four. Diamond a corner a little bit. Here I'm getting them just done really quickly. Look at eight. Uh, got it rotated. Couldn't get to the gas. That's, that's what was so impressive about Kyle's lap is 
when he got that baby rotated and got to the throttle, he was able to stay with it. And Reddick really slid up getting in a three. He went for it. She just didn't wasn't stick. There. Fourth at 33-14. Denny Hamlin trying to back up a 32-87, which would put him second. This car is one of my favorites watching practice. He's really strong on a long run. Man, Kyle got in the corner so hard and was able to rotate that. Denny was able to turn and get off just a little bit better, but still not as good as. For as hard as Kyle Busch got into turn one, I cannot believe he was able to wrap that bottom as good as he did. Pretty stellar lap. I think of Denny as an easy in and hard off the corner guy. You can see it there. It's not quite as good as Kyle. Second for Hamlin. He backs up his round one time, 32.87. There's the fastest cat in the alley who already has a win at Doe Run Raceway last night. Where are they racing tonight? Granite City, maybe? We'll Somewhere. Check. We'll find I, out. I promise <laughs> you. Kyle Busch and his son Brexton will both be racing at Wayne County Speedway tonight in Illinois. And uh, will we be going up there as the pole winner for tomorrow's race here? Well, we got five more cars to run to find out, but Kyle Busch pretty happy right now with a 3280. Here are the five drivers who transferred to the final round from Group B, beginning with Martin Truex, who ran a 3297. If he backs that up, he'll be third. Mike mentioned it earlier. He's got an Xfinity win here. Track that anywhere you go, you're going to have to beat Martin. I mean, he's just great on every type of racetrack. Right down on the bottom of the racetrack. Smooth. Smooth and steady. Not enough A little speed. bit off on the speed, but car looks good. Third for Truex. 33 flat. So that backs up... Uh, Round one for Truex. Austin Sindrick will be next for Team Penske. 32-91 for Sindrick in uh, round one. Remember the movie Tron, the Disney movie with uh, everybody had those like blue neon lights on all the costumes. This is what this car reminds me of. I've uh, always liked this paint scheme. It's cool. Yeah. For the uh, all electric uh, new tractor trailer. Look at this exit. Looked like a little bit of easy in there, and then hard off was able to make up a little ground, but man. Had to lift a little bit of the wall, costing some speed down the back stretch. And away goes Kyle. I guess when you see Kyle Busch down on pit road, smiling, laughing, talking with his team, I got all <laughs> I could out of that car. <laughs> if somebody beats me, they can have it because I got it all. Cindric seventh, 33-20. Kevin Harvick ran a 32.87 in round one. That's right where Denny Hamlin is in both round one and two. Obviously, anybody's capable of doing it in this crowd, but the one they've got their eye on is that last car, Ryan Blaney. Oh, up the hill goes Kevin a bit. Still a decent lap to get through three and four. You know, guys, normally at a flat track like this, the theory is in like a lamb, out like a lion. Well, let me tell you something. Kyle Busch went in like a lion and out like a lion and got by with it. Nobody has picked the throttle up and been able to stay in it uh, coming off either end. And that speed just carries down these long straightaways. Yeah, I was so impressed with how hard he got off into turn one. We were seeing it with a ghost car and just would drive away from everybody, but was still able to hook the bottom, rotate, and get to the gas and never lift. Just a lot of speed out of that race car. So Harvick is third and the fastest Ford. Here is Ross Chastain and his team track house Chevy. There he saw it in the ghost car again, just the least little bit right through the middle. 
Everybody else, if they rotate that good, it rolls out from underneath of them and they have to lift. Really slows them down. See, he got it in a turn three, even rifled it off in there really deep, was able to wrap the bottom, never come out from underneath of him, drive off into the sunset. And Chastain is seventh with that lap of 3309. Now it's it. up to Ryan Blaney. So we know that Kyle Busch will have the first pick of pit stalls here at Worldwide Technology Raceway because Blaney's team under penalty for failing inspection twice. So he is running only for his starting spot after a blistering lap of 3279 in round one. That would be good enough for the pole. There's an easy in. That's what we talked about, man. He just. I'm talking Kyle Busch was able to get off in the corner so much harder. It's going to come down to three and four, Mike. This is a great battle. It's close. Blaney did a great job exiting two. Blaney had the mid corner speed, but he's exiting. It's close. Second by one one. Wow. <laughs> That's fantastic. Kyle Busch, Randall Burnett, Richard Childress Racing. Regan. Well, Kyle, Kyle Busch getting congratulations from his team down here to lead the field to green tomorrow here at Gateway. Kyle, that lap, though, was a monster lap and a great pickup from round two or round one. What'd you do different? Uh, a lot of things. A lot of things, actually. So, um, yeah, no, we, we made up a lot of adjustments to the race car as well, too. And uh, Randall and the boys did a great job. So, uh, Real proud of everybody on this three cheek Camaro. It was, um, I knew there was speed in it. It was just a matter of being able to hit it right and, and do everything that I needed to do behind the wheel and got everything I could get out of it in one and two and, and seemed to be just good enough there in three and four to beat the 12. But uh, overall, good day for us. So, uh, you know, thanks to all of our partners, Lenovo, Alsco, and, um, you know, Rowdy Energy, Chevrolet. Uh, again, you know, the three cheek Camaro is ready for tomorrow. You mentioned turns one and two, got everything you could out of it. We were watching on the ghost car, and that appeared to be the area where the lap really went good for you. Did your car just stick that much better than everybody else? I made it stick. Um, <laughs> I, I, I can't take all the credit. Um, yes, the, the car, it, that was where we kind of struggled in practice the most a little bit, and that's where we've been working on it the most. And so it seems like each change we've been making to it, we've been getting better down there, and uh, it's rewarding us. Nice job. Thanks, Kyle. First poll of the season for Kyle Busch. He's the eighth driver to win a poll this year. 15 seasons he has been a poll winner in his cup career, and this is the 18th track on which he has won a poll. So Kyle Busch will have the poll, and Ryan Blaney gets his first front row start of the season. Momentum for Blaney. Yeah. Really good long run car. Got a great starting position. That pit road penalty, though, it's going to hurt. A lot of heavy hitters in this one. They're all up front. Cannot wait for tomorrow. Hamlin, very fast race car. His teammate Truex is right there. Logano won this race last year. There's the, the Hendrick cars. That's really the only ones that are missing out of this group. Regan. Mike Ryan Blaney will start on the outside of the front row tomorrow. That's the good news. Bad news is you're going to lose your pit pick, unfortunately. But this team carrying a ton of momentum right now. Yeah, no, really proud of the effort today. Um, you know, the Menards Richmond Ford Mustang was really fast off the truck and uh, carried that speed into qualifying. And I thought it's a pretty good lap for being in group two. Usually group two, I think, slows down a little bit. The tires don't cool off as fast. So um, I really thought <laughs> that lap was going to get there. I was impressed by the lap they ate to put up. That's a, that a fast lap. So, um, yeah, it's, it would almost been bittersweet if we would have got the pole because we wouldn't have been able to pick pits anyway. But uh, proud of the effort by the 12 group. I think we have a really fast race car for tomorrow. So just a matter of staying in the game all day. Thanks, Ryan. Ryan Blaney misses the pole by eight one thousandth of a second as he'll share the front row with Kyle Busch, Chevy Ford, fastest Toyota, Denny Hamlin in third. A lot of heavy hitters up front. There's the first of those Hendrick cars is William Byron in seventh. AJ Allmendinger, we talked about his road racing prowess. How will that pay off when we start shifting gears for all day tomorrow? Bubba Wallace back here in row 10. We talked about how fast he is. Hot streak. See if Kyle we can keep Larson. that alive. Kyle Larson deep in the field in row 11. And Eric Almarola fastest in his group in practice, row 12. I wouldn't count Kyle Larson out just yet, though. Would you, Mike? No. No, no. <laughs> He's special. 
Corey LaJoy with the little contact to the nine car off turn four. Has all day tomorrow to make that up. I'm excited. I, you know, racy racetrack, watching this race back from last year. Boy, they put on a whale of a show, and I think we're in, in store hot and slick tomorrow. So Xfinity qualifying is next, then race day, then the Toyota 200, then race day and the Xfinity Series race. Keep it right here on FS1.